I love Pixar movies! Like, for real, Pixar movies are always such a jam, you know? I always have a great time when I put them on, and unlike other animated studios, Pixar is so close to my heart. Like, it's insane. I grew up watching a lot of their films, and I get a lot of nostalgia from them. And today, well, you read the title, but today I am going to be ranking every single Pixar movie that's on Wikipedia. And for the purposes of this, I set nostalgia completely aside. I will focus on what the movie presents and if it was actually good or not. And um, spoilers, of course, for every Pixar movie. This isn't a spoiler free list, but you can skip through the movies you haven't seen if you want. I don't know. Do what you want. Anyway, hope you enjoy. Also, remember that these are all my opinion, and sorry if I roast your favorite childhood film. <sighs> Alright, number 26 is one I wasn't expecting a whole lot from going in. Cars 2. Why do I have to talk about this movie? This movie is a walking trash truck. Like, why did the creators of the first movie go... Let's make a whole movie where we focus on Mater, the one character no one enjoyed watching. The plot is stupid, it's just so disconnected to the first and third movie to the point where you don't even need to watch this one if you want to understand the third movie or what happened after the first. It focuses on spies, which is, you know, the last thing you think of when you think of cars. The characters are so annoying and insufferable, even the returning characters just felt out of character because they all don't have any personality other than idiocy. Oh, speaking of the characters, they make the only other female character other than Lightning's girlfriend who has any importance, Mater's girlfriend. What? Mater has no chemistry with any of the spy cars to the point where it's just annoying to watch. The entire movie is annoying to watch. Y you know what? I'm done. If you haven't seen this movie, please do because I want you to know how much of a dumpster fire this movie is. Alright, number 25. Hopefully this one won't make me as mad. Oh, uh, wait, we're talking about Brave. No! This movie is bad. It's not infuriating most of the time. The score is mediocre, it's just generic, and I don't have much else to say for it. I don't like Merida. She's just annoying, and for traumatizing her mother and turning her into a literal bear, she gets no consequences. Merida is literally the villain because she causes all of the problems doesn't grow, and remains infuriating the entire movie, even to the end. Gosh, is there anything good in Brave? Well, yes, actually. The opening in the movie is actually shockingly charming. I got excited, but then the rest of the movie happened. Also, the scene where Meredith shoots the arrow through another arrow was shockingly well done, and just really cool to watch. Uh, I guess I liked when Meredith's mother felt bad for burning bow. It felt pretty genuine. Obviously, this movie's trashness has stemmed from its troubled production, but even movies like Toy Story 2 had troubled productions and still managed to make a good movie. Um, but yeah, I guess you could blame the movie for that. Whatever, moving on. Number 24 is The Good Dinosaur. There's not much to say about this one. Okay, I'll start with the good stuff. The opening joke about the meteor was actually really good and really made me laugh. The only laugh I got out of the entire movie, actually. The scene where Arlo and... Oh, wait. What's the what's the boy's name? Let me look it up. Spot? Oh, yeah. I actually do remember that. Okay, back to the script. The scene where Arlo and Spot show what happened to their families without talking was nice and pretty emotional, I'm not gonna lie. Arlo becoming stronger was kind of well done, I guess. I thought it was pretty good. Uh, the animation for the environment looks really good. The actual dinosaurs, on the other hand, just look really goofy and childish. Um, yeah, that's all the good stuff. Alright, on to the bad stuff. Why does the flood kill the dad, but Arlo and a literal infant don't die from it? Like, that makes no sense to me. The actual plot of the movie is very generic. A dino wants to get home. That's it. The things Arlo meets on his journey are really forgettable, and I only really remember the pterodactyl eating the squirrel. Uh, other than that, the movie is just a blur. Just kind of a forgettable journey with forgettable characters and a forgettable musical score. Disney really makes bad dinosaur movies, huh? Weird.
Okay, next on the list is a movie that, believe it or not, inspired this whole list. Take your guesses now. All right, that's that's enough guessing. Believe it or not, Cars 1 is the movie that inspired this list because I never watched it as a kid. A lot of my friends grew up watching these movies and they loved them and I, I'd never seen them. So I was curious and I'm glad I didn't grow up with this movie because it's kind of bad. It's just a generic mean rich guy learns to be nice and makes friends along the way, which isn't done super well in this movie. Another thing that isn't done super well is the world building or lack thereof because there isn't any. How did cars become sentient and how did they make houses and buildings? None of this is explained and I kind of wish it was because it would actually be kind of interesting. Something about cars building how that would be like kind of interesting. Also, how do they have guns? Okay, anyway, whatever. Even ignoring the world building, the movie is just mediocre through and through. It didn't really infuriate me like cars 2, but I really didn't like it and didn't find a whole lot of importance in its existence. But I but it, it was fine. Lightning's character arc, for being as generic as it is, is actually pretty well done. It's whatever, you know. Mater isn't too annoying in this one, but still kind of gets under my skin a little bit. But every once in a while, he says a funny joke that actually makes me laugh a little bit. The rest of the characters are just kind of forgettable. Except the Italian stereotype cars, they were, they were kind of fun. Anyways, I don't have much else to say. Go to the next one already. Number 22 is A Bug's Life. There's really not a lot to say about this one. It's a very basic movie, but that kind of works in its favor because the simplicity just fits for some reason. The characters are pretty fun, but there is the liar exposed trope that we all know and love, and the majority of the movie is built around that, making it not very fun to watch. Uh, the villain is pretty fun. He has good presence and he fits the movie, plus his death scene is horrific. The animation of the rain is pretty good, especially for the time. The score is good and fits the movie well. And I really don't have a lot to say about this movie. That's basically it. It's a good movie through and through, but it's no masterpiece. But it's not bad. I'll, I'd say it's it's in the middle. All right, go to the next one. Number 21. All right. Finding Dory is really confusing to me. It has a charming start and it's a fun movie overall, but the plot is just... It's something. Is it something good? No, not really. One major problem I have with this film is that Dory has flashbacks that appear whenever the plot needs them. They're cute, but they're so convenient to the plot that they feel really forced and don't make a lot of sense. Hank is animated super well, but he kind of remains unlikable for slightly too long for me to say he's enjoyable to watch. Destiny is kind of fun, but practically every other side character is just kind of boring. Uh, the scene where Dory is told her mom and dad are dead and it's that first person shot is really well done and the tension is really felt. Of course, the best part of the movie is where Pixar tries to wrangle in those tears. And by that, I mean the scene where Dory finds her parents. It's beautiful, and when you notice that the parents are still laying shells all these years later, or however long it's been, I can't remember. It hits me emotionally, and it's it's beautiful. Then Dory and Hank drive a car on the wrong side of the road and probably kill people in the aftermath. Remember how I said this movie is confusing? On one hand, you have this beautiful spectacle of cinema, and then you have this. But what is this? <laughs> well, I don't know what else to say. Go to the next one. Number 20 is Turning Red. I don't know about this one. From the opening moments, I knew this movie was movie. <laughs> Move. <laughs> I, okay, I don't know about this one. From the opening moments, I knew this movie was coming from a place of love and care, and that's something I can't say about all the Pixar movies. So I think that's a plus. Okay, good things. Well, I love the dad. Uh, I think the mom is portrayed somewhat realistically. The animation on the food is pretty good looking. The music is decent and the intro is pretty unique, but narration sometimes just take me out of the movie a little. Of course this movie has the whole friends breaking up because of a misunderstanding trope, which is as annoying as ever. And of course the ending, oh the ending, it's really bad you guys. The mom gets mad one time and turns into a panda the size of a skyscraper. <laughs> like what? It's so strange and crazy that I was just utterly baffled watching it. I don't know, man. Just like Finding Dory, this movie just kind of confuses me. 
there really isn't any massive emotional moment, at least not that I can remember. It wasn't that funny. I laughed a few times, but it wasn't like laugh out loud like some other movies. And I remember being just kind of annoyed by the ending half of the movie. But this movie just contained the Awooga scene, so 10 out of 10 movie, moving on. Cars 3 Okay, now we're getting into the final Cars movie. That is on the Wikipedia list, thank the lord. Well, now I have to talk about this movie, so let's go. The animation is really good in this one, like just the landscapes and everything, even the cars look pretty good. For some reason, Lightning is just kind of a jerk in this one for a while, and I don't know why. Cruising the old cars actually made me laugh a bit, which is nice to have for once in this franchise. Cruz in general is just a pretty good character, but nothing crazy special. The ending is good with the whole flip around the other car thingy that... The music is good, but nothing crazy. The movie is easily the best one, and the funniest part of it is that it doesn't acknowledge Cars 2 at all. Like, literally not at all. That's hilarious. When the franchise sets its mind on racing, it actually has some good scenes and themes. And this movie focuses entirely on racing, with little filler. All this to say, it's still a 7 out of 10 movie. All the world building problems I had with the first movie still apply to this one. Hearing Kate Six voice, aka Nathan Fillion, made me really happy. I think the character's name was named Sterling or something, I, but I don't remember. I just remember and saw Kate in this car. Now let's go to prison! <laughs> I don't know, man. There isn't a whole lot to adore with this one, but there isn't a whole lot to hate either. We're getting on to the better movie, guys. Let's go! Okay, now this is recorded after the rest because it wasn't out when I started working on this video, but Elemental. I was expecting Elemental to be one of the worst movies I've ever seen, and it kind of was. Ah, it was fine. All right, I'll rattle the things off, a few things off real quick. Music's unique. I like the two characters, the main characters. Um, every time Claude showed up, however, I wanted to football punt him off a cliff. All right, anyway. The thing that turned me off for this movie was the fact that it's a romance movie, which I personally do not like most of the time. But I was actually charmed by the characters, and their interactions were decent. One thing that sucked about this movie is that they pulled every romance cliche. Like, literally every scene is pulled from another movie, and it just gets so old so quick. I thought the world was weird, but fine. They kind of try to pull a Zootopia and have the elements be allegories for different races and it really doesn't fit well like if they really wanted to do this well just make them people how how hard is that overall this movie was fine I'm never watching it again but i didn't hate it and i guess that's where we're at with pixar now number 18 is onward this is usually regarded as one of the more hated movies in the pixar lineup but i personally like it quite a bit it's no masterpiece, of course, it's still number 18 on the list, but it's a sweet little movie. This movie stars Spider-Man and Star-Lord as Smurfs in a magical world. That sounds stupid, and it is a little, but it has its charm. Both Tom Holland and Chris Pratt, I think, do a pretty good job in this movie. I personally think they both fit their characters pretty well. The plot is pretty generic, it's just a fetch quest the entire movie. They go around a literal magical world and they only meet like three people along the journey who, after talking to the main characters, immediately start using magic again. I just wish the movie did more with this magical world that lost, that's lost magic. Like, it's a cool setup, but they don't do a whole lot with it. Let's see. Positive things. Uh, the bridge scene, of course, was really well done, and the tension is really there and felt. Uh, the manticore is fun. That's about it. The message of Barley being Ian's father figure all along was nice, but I think it should have been built up a little bit more but it still had its impact. The unique spells and their unique names are pretty cool, and the fight at the end was really action-packed and really cool. The ending is kind of rushed, where everyone just starts using their magical abilities now. Like, they just shove that into the end. I don't know what else to really talk about. The emotional resolution was nice, and the animation is stellar as always. But I don't, I don't really know. Go to the next one. Alright, Incredibles 2. Now here's the thing, is this one anywhere near the greatness of the first movie? Absolutely not. But is it a giant piece of garbage? 
No, it's not, people. I don't think it's that bad. Well, let's get into it. I'll start by talking about the screen slaver. I don't get her. Obviously, the plan is something that you can nitpick. It's pretty ridiculous. I want superheroes to be illegal, so let's make them legal again and then make them illegal. Yeah, the plan is kind of silly, but I think they have some good lines and monologues. Every meaningful experience must be packaged and delivered to you to watch at a distance so that you can remain ever sheltered, ever passive, ever ravenous consumers. Also, I gotta acknowledge Catherine Keener as Evelyn. Just like most of her roles, she crushes it as as boring as the character is. Frozen is good as always, thank you Samuel L. Jackson. And Jack Jack and Edna paired together match really well and are very hilarious. Like, I actually la laughed a lot at this. Violet and her side arc are pretty fun and her spitting water her nose will literally never get old. The music slaps, as always. Winston should have been a better character because he's basically just a red herring the entire movie. And I kind of wish they, like, built him up more. Maybe made him more eccentric. More money, gr money hungry. I don't know, man. It's a good movie, but it's not even close to the first. Stop hating on this one so much. Alright, next on the list is Luca. Luca is just kind of a fun cute movie it's not deep or emotionally moving but that's fine because the movie doesn't really need it the end in general past the whole race part just was rushed the whole town who since the beginning of time was hunting sea monsters and wanting to kill them just accepts them and loves them because they won the race i don't know doesn't seem super realistic to me and i know we're talking about a movie with fish people but like come on it could be realistic also, I set this aside for the ranking, but I really enjoy seeing an Italian film in mainstream media. There's something you don't see a lot, and and it made me happy. Now let's talk about the characters. Luca is enjoyable to watch because he's just a massive chicken, and that's that's always fun to watch. Alberto is fine, but he gets annoying towards the middle when Luca and Julia start to get along. Also, the split up between Alberto and Luca isn't done super well. Well, Julia is a pretty fun character, and her dad has the best character design of all time. Also, the villain is just kind of a generic Disney Channel original mean popular person, but I actually don't find him too annoying, because he just fits the movie for some reason, and I was glad to see his comeuppance. The movie in general is funny, but not like, laugh out loud funny, you know? It's a fun movie, check it out. Coco. I'm gonna be real folks, I am not in love with this film. I think it does a great job at showing Mexican culture and probably the best part of the film is the respect it gives to this culture. Both worlds in general feel lived in and the animation for them is beautiful. The characters are pretty good and De La Cruz is such a good twist villain, which is a shocker for once. I love how he is portrayed and his borderline insanity is really entertaining to watch. Hector himself feels pretty built up for the movie and the fact that Miguel runs into him out of all the millions of people in this place is just unrealistic and borderline impossible. They work well together and they're fun, but it's just too impossible for me to suspend my disbelief. This movie isn't all that funny also, a lot of the jokes in this one actually kind of fell flat, which I wasn't expecting. Voice acting is fine, but I think a few of the lines were just kind of cheesy in this one for some reason. I don't know how to explain it. One thing I do love is how Hector wrote the song Remember Me to be a song about his daughter, but De La Cruz turned it into a song about his fame. Just really well done there. Also, the ending is really something special. It's emotional and well done. This is a good movie. Not perfect, but I'll take it. Alright, following Coco is Toy Story 4. Yeah, it's not much of a competition, this one is probably the worst. That's be that being said, it's still really good. It's not super funny, but a few laughs here and there. Really all I have to talk about is the character stuff, so let's go into that I guess. The relationship built between Woody and Bo Peep is especially good in this one. Their romance from the first movie is still there, but it doesn't feel weird. Gabby Gabby was such a fun twist hero. Her story is entirely twisted and I love it. Also her ending with the Missing kid never fails to make me tear up a little bit. Forky is something...
something. Forky is someone I always expected to hate going into this, at least from what I saw in the trailers. He was just kind of the... He just gave off Turk from Tarzan vibes, you know? But I was pleasantly surprised. He's a good comic relief to this more serious Toy Story movie. Also, the combined friends are pretty fun. Uh, who else is there? Oh, yeah. Buzz. His story arc in this one is honestly really bad. His whole thing is that he has this inner voice, and that basically tells him what to do. Like, these sound effects just work so well for the plot. That they're so convenient. It just becomes, like, annoying to watch, you know? Well, I don't know. That's basically all the characters. So, what else is there? It is really good at animation, but nothing crazy, you know? The score is really good, especially toward the end when it goes crazy. I like how the dad was mad at things went wrong, and it just made me chuckle, and it was pretty realistic. Like, this poor guy just wants to go on his field trip. Alright, that's about it for this movie. Alright, number 13 is one that I think is a, is really good most of the time. But one that I don't think is enough praise. And that movie is Monsters University. It's good, you guys. Trust me. I would never lie. I think the first and third acts of this movie are really solid and bring some of that charm that was in Monsters, Inc. The second act, though, is incredibly mid. That being the scare games. Let's talk about those acts, though. The first act is my going to Monsters University for the first time and meeting Sullivan! And also this guy, who I don't think is very important because he doesn't do a lot in this movie. He goes about college and just kind of chills. It's good and a good intro to the movie. Now we get to the scare games. Honestly, such a mood killer. It's just a bunch of mini games to show which team is the scariest and I just didn't find it all that entertaining. Other than the ending, where they actually get to scare these bot children, that part is pretty good and entertaining to watch. Overall, this part is just kind of lame. The third act, on the other hand, whew, boy, it's so good. Like, the part where the screams and lights flicker in and out over Sully's scream, so good, dude. The talk that Mike, Sully and Mike have by the water, whew, everything about it is just amazing. The music, the position, the camera takes, the feels, the action. It's just so incredible, and I can't explain it. Just watch the movie, you'll understand what I mean. The middle section really drags, but it's worth for the ending. Also, hearing Abby Plaza as this person was pretty cool. Parks and Rec moment. Alright, number 12 is Soul. Now, I really like Soul. This movie, along with Ratatouille and The Incredibles, just make me wish Pixar did a slice of like indie style movie. Without these soul shenanigans, I think this movie would have been perfect. But it's not perfect. But let's talk about the good stuff first. I really like Joe. He's fun and entertaining to watch. Also, he's a piano player, which I happen to be a master pianist. Just kidding, I'm, I'm mediocre. <laughs> the humor is good most of the time, but sometimes it's a little childish. But most of the time, it's, it's pretty good. Also, I really like how this one tackles religion. Because we never actually see the great beyond. And while I'm Christian, I like that people of other religions can watch this and enjoy it. Because it doesn't take any religious belief. Just that there is an afterlife. Also, I like the Jesus joke. That was, that was pretty funny. I love the score. Obviously the piano stuff. But also the normal score is really good as well. Very atmospheric. I love all the contemplation scenes and especially the scene between Joe and his mom. It's very emotional and well done all together. Also, Joe being a cat is interesting because he gets to learn about life from an outside perspective. And it's kind of interesting. All of the messages in this movie are thought provoking and sometimes hit deep. But of course, this movie pulls the classic Disney turns a person of color into an animal. That's happened multiple times in Disney history, which I don't know what to say about. I, I, I don't know. It's, it's pretty bad. I don't really love the soul realm in general, and it contains 22, who isn't terrible, but just really generic from a character perspective. This movie has its problems, yeah, but it's still a really good movie and I recommend checking it out. Yeah. Number 11! Yeah, Toy Story! Woo! The one that started it all, yeah! What can I say about the first Toys, Toy Story that hasn't already been said by everyone? It's good, I really like it. The world building is simple, but works for the movie. The characters are good and entertaining to watch, the score is iconic, and the best part of the movie, 
the comedy this movie is hilarious woody and buzz work together so well in this one better than probably any other toy story movie their interactions all together are just so funny to watch the story isn't perfect but it's still good the voice acting is really good everyone nails this one the thing i don't like about this movie is how annoying woody is yeah of course the whole thing is he has this character arc of learning to be a better person but it just goes on for slightly too long similar to cars in that in that regard while he is a little annoying he's still delightful to watch because of how funny he is mm, anything else to talk about nope not really Alrighty, before we get into the top 10, go ahead and grab yourself some water. I got myself some sparkling water, so go ahead and take your sip. Ah, dude, water is so good. Alright guys, we made it to the top 10. These are the 8.5 out of 10s and above. Now look, this next movie... Ah, I do not think is a fan favorite, but if I put it anywhere lower, I would be lying to myself. And to you all, and I would never lie to you guys. Number 10 is Lightyear. Look, 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 stop. Don't turn the video off. Look, for some reason, I really like this one. I just had so much fun with it. I was smiling through the whole thing. But I will talk about my complaints first. I don't really like Zerg and Old Buzz, which is a shame because I was really looking forward to seeing him. Also, yeah, it's established in, toys, in another to Toy Story movie. I think it was the second one, but I'm not going to look it up. That Zerg is Buzz's father. And I was excited to see that, but alas, nope. They should have built him up more and developed more time into his backstory because it, I didn't understand any of it. However, I do kind of like the conflict between the buzzes, and I think it's well done. I wish this movie had more 90s cliches. Like, this is the one movie I wanted to see more cliches in because it's, you know, the 90s movie that Andy saw when he was a kid. So, of course, it would be cliche, but it's just kind of like this regular movie you know like buzz in the original toy stories was a walking cliche and if this movie was made before those toys then this buzz should be more energetic and cliche but whatever he's fine there were some good messages but they weren't fleshed out enough for me to really enjoy them all right that's basically all i gotta say about the bats the animation in this one is special and even for even for pixar the planets and space animation is just incredible the building of the colony was really cool time lapse I enjoyed the characters and they weren't anything but they weren't anything crazy i did really enjoy alicia and izzy hawthorne and on the topic of alicia of all the pixar movies to make me cry lightyear yeah the sequence where alicia gets older just was like a really good sequence and got me emotional socks is pretty fun honestly he's just you know a toy you know just buy this at your local target <laughs> Honestly, I thought the humor was pretty good. I was laughing quite a lot in this one, but not as much as other Pixar movies. Also, the jokes with Ivan were pretty funny. I don't know, man. It's a fun movie. Not perfect, but fun. Alright, number 9. Toy Story 2. I love this film. Rather than taking a comedic route, this one takes more of an indie route following more of a slice of life style of storytelling and it does it really well well half of this movie is slice of life and the rest is buzz and friends trying to get woody home but whatever i don't really know what to say about this film the movie is just overall really good and the references to pop culture are really good in this one also no one really talks about the tag scenes when talking about this movie it's for some reason really funny and i burst out laughing when it happened the movie is amazing it's not in my top five but i'd rewatch it over and over again Check it out if for some reason you haven't seen it yet. It's good. Wow, we're getting close to number one. Well, number eight is Inside Out. Inside Out, Coco and Soul get compared a lot because their centers are focused on the unseeable, the other worlds, you know? This one, however, is my favorite. I love this movie. On it, obviously, the first thing that comes to my mind whenever I think of this movie is Amy Poehler as Joy. She crushes it, of course. Everyone else in the cast also do a really good job, but I mean, I'm a huge Parks and Rec guy, so, you know, Leslie Nobe is the highlight. Alright, now let's talk about the movie. The comedy for this one is off the charts. The physical and verbal comedy are just amazing. I don't know 
if it's funnier than Toy Story, but it might be. This one is comical in a good way. However, not only is it hilarious, but it's also really emotional. And the score just really hits those emotions hard. Also, the emotions are really entertaining to watch, and I love the characters in general. The theme of sadness being important is really well done in this movie, and the climax is honestly one of the best in Pixar history. Yeah, this movie has massive plot holes, but when I watch it, I don't get distracted by them. This is an amazing movie, and I love this one. Well done, Pixar. Number 7 is the movie I probably watched the most as a kid, and that is Finding Nemo. Yeah, it's really good. I don't know what to say because I was just I just really like this movie. And like I said at the beginning, nostalgia is not affecting my mood at all. For example, I like Brave as a kid. The voice cast in particular do a really good job in this one. I enjoy all their deliveries. Speaking of voice actors, yeah, Willem Dafoe plays Gil in this movie. Yeah, the Green Goblin himself. That was really fun to watch. Ellen DeGeneres' voice is really bittersweet after all the controversy around her a while back, but I think she still does a good job. The Tank Gang in general are really fun and I enjoyed them a lot. Honestly, I think this movie is funnier than Toy Story 1. I left a lot for some reason on this viewing. The animation on the water and fish, especially for the time, is really impressive. The dentistry stuff was good. The seagulls are a funny running gag. Nemo and Marlin are really good protagonists. The sharks and turtles are fun. The score is good. The marine biology facts and interesting stuff is really good. I don't know what to say. This movie is just really good all around. No noticeable massive drops in quality or anything all like through the whole movie. I enjoyed it a lot, and honestly, you should too. Number 6 is Up. Now this one is really good. Obviously I have to talk about the opening. It's so good and makes me want more wordless storytelling in Pixar films because this along with some other films so shows that they have mastered it. So what about the rest of the movie? It's still a really good movie but the rest of it doesn't compare to the opening other than a few moments here and there where it comes back to hit you in the feels. Obviously the score is also unbelievable, it's probably my second favorite Pixar score. And yeah, it slaps. I have Married Life on my playlist, and I will not take it off. I like Carl and Russell. I think they work really well together and are pretty funny. I know a lot of people don't like the journey in this one because the opening is so good and then the journey is just kind of another kids movie plot line. And yeah, I can see that, but I still really enjoy the adventures nonetheless. The villain is good and, you know, the cone of shame exists, which is hilarious. Russell's family stuff that he talks about is really interesting and emotional. Doug is fun and I laughed a lot at his interactions. And of course, the final scene with Carl's house on Paradise Falls will never fail to make me cry. I love this movie, and while I think it has problems, I still love it so much that it deserves number six. All right, we're in the top five now, guys. These are the movies that I think show what Pixar is all about. Films with good characters, scores, themes, conflicts, animation, and more. And starting it off, we have Toy Story 3. Now, with most franchises, they would have a banger of a first film, then the sequels would be pretty subpar, but not for Toy Story. Toy Story 3 is easily my favorite one, and is probably one of the most emotional in Pixar's lineup. I love the expansion of the world, and by that I mean, you know, the daycare. It's like such an interesting concept that they just roll with. Uh, the new characters we meet are also really fun and interesting. The score, the animation, all of this is amazing. Also, Buzz can speak Spanish, I guess, and that's just kind of thrown in there. And it's, you know, it's good. The villain is good. The prison break is super fun and engaging. Yeah, it's just all so good. And it contains one of my favorite scenes in all of cinema, the fire dump scene. There's not much I can say about it. It's emotional, the score fits it perfectly, and it's just one of the best scenes ever. And while Toy Story 4 exists, I think this movie is the perfect end to the Toy Story trilogy. If you haven't seen this one, do it. And now we have WALL-E as number 4. I don't know what to say about this one. Almost everything in this movie is perfection. 
The animation is incredible, Wally is a really fun character, and Eve is also really good. The John and Mary joke where they fall in love and for some, is for some reason just really funny, and I liked it a lot. Cap Captain McCree is for some reason really well written, really well written. <laughs> Captain McCree is really well wit. Oh my gosh, Captain McCree! This is the hardest sentence I have ever said in my life. Captain McCree is for some reason really well. Mm -hmm. Captain McCree is for some reason really well written and fun to watch. <sighs> and probably the only problem I have with Wally is this guy, the wheel. Out of all the villains that this movie could have had, why did they choose the wheel? He doesn't even have a good reason, he's just programmed to be evil. Why not make him like every other robot in this movie and give him a fun personality and a reason for being evil and trying to stop, you know, Earth from being rehabited or whatever? Well, that's kind of like the only complaint I have with this movie. The score on this one is just really unique and fits the movie really well. I don't know. This one is just so close to perfection, and I love it. I watch it, like, all the time. And if you haven't, please do now. Come on, it's really good. Final three. All right, number three, Ratatouille. It's really something special, dude. This, this is the only Pixar film that is 100% a slice of life film, and it does it really well. The characters are really realistic, and I like them a lot. Their interactions are how real people interact, and the animation on the food is really great. And now I want to eat some Ratatouille IRL. I think the middle of the story is a little clunky and not amazing, but the rest of the film out outshines that, so it's not even terrible. Colette and Linguini's relationship should have been built up a little bit more, but they still have some chemistry, so it's not like terrible to watch or gringy. Great score, great villain with Ego. Like, Ego is really something amazing. And the scene where he eats the ratatouille is just pure perfection. And I think the whole cast is really well, but Patton Oswalt does a really good job with this one. Like, his, vo his voice just fits the rat really well. I love this movie, and it deserves to be in the top three. And it could easily be number two or number one. They, they're all so good. Everything in this film just works well together. I don't know how to explain it. The film overall is pretty adult, especially for Pixar, which is always great to see. Yeah, this film was amazing. Watch it. Moving on. Number two is Monsters, Inc. One of the most interesting films. Like, whoever had the idea for this film is a genius of, like, this monster world. That's incredible. Like, that's such a fun idea. Obviously, I love Mike and Sullivan, but I, I think they play off of each other really well. The movie overall is hilarious, and the sense of humor this movie has is amazing. I love Randall, and the twist villain of Mr. Waternoose is really well done and enjoyable. The music and score is really fun to jam to. I think Boo is adorable, and Sully and her work well together. Like, they just, like, fit together well. The beginning, middle, and end all flow really well together, and with no noticeable clunkiness anywhere, at least none that I saw. The facial expressions are really good and funny and expressive. They're good. I think this is the only movie in existence to do the whole friends break up and make up before the climax, and they did it actually well. Like, that's the only movie that's ever done that well. They actually pull it off, and it fits the movie, and it you know, expands the narrative. It actually works. Also, the ending is amazing, and I cry every time. Like, it's impossible not to cry, dude. Yeah, this movie is a masterpiece. I can't say everything good about it, because I'd probably never end. Watch it, you will not regret it. And finally, what a shocker. Number one is The Incredibles. It's probably one of my favorite animated films of all time. No, it's one of my favorite films of all time. It's probably in like my top three. I love this movie so much. And yes, I did watch it as a kid, and I liked it. But it is not nostalgia. This is an incredible movie, through and through. The characters are realistic. The score, the amazing opening, the cast, the villain. Ooh, I want to talk, talk about Syndrome. Without a doubt, the best Pixar villain. He's so good. He's hilarious. 
enjoyable to watch, and a formidable foe. He's set up at the beginning, forgotten about, and then is the villain. It's so good. The animation just has some sort of amusing vibe to it. Like, it's just, like, warm for some reason. Maybe that's nostalgic, actually. Whatever. <laughs> also, the fact that they are superheroes is probably the least important part of the film. The be like it, The best parts of the film are probably just the family aspect of it and how they interact with each other and how it's expressed so shockingly realistically. It's just incredible. The characters in this one are really amazing. Like I talked about the family, but they're all funny, fantastic, realistic, and just fun to watch. I enjoy them all. Frozone is probably my favorite. I don't know. He's just, there's something fun to watch about him. I don't know. The, the final battle is so great and enjoyable to watch. This is without a doubt my favorite superhero film, and I've seen almost all of the MCU. Not all of it, though. And I've also seen the Dark Knight trilogy. This one probably is higher up than those. I love this movie so much. Can you tell that I like this movie? <laughs> this film is so good, like, for real. If you haven't seen this one, this is the one that you have to watch, in my opinion, obviously. Other people have their favorite films. But this is my favorite film, and you should definitely watch it. Like, literally, right now, stop what you are doing. I don't care, you could be doing something, like, the most important thing in your life. Stop doing it, and watch this movie. You will thank me later. If you guys want me to do this again, with maybe another company, like, DreamWorks, or Illumination, please don't make me do Illumination, please. Anyway, have an amazing day. God bless. I Oh, also subscribe, please.